Good morning. I acknowledge the presence today here of Guju Guju and his wife Jenny. And Lily Formile will now welcome us to country, to her country. Good morning, everyone. My name is Lily Formal. I am the daughter of Guju Guju Formal. We are a long line of direct descendants of King Yinni, a true leader of the Gimoy Wallabai Yidinji Nation. I'd like to share with you the meaning of Gimoy Wallabara. Gimoy being the Yidinji name of the slippery blue fig that grew in a large number in the Cairns area. Walla being the Yadinji name for side of the hill and Bara meaning people belonging to. We are the tribal authority of the land on which we work, play and live and recognize our continuing connection to land, water and community. I pay respects to elders past, present and emerging. I like to welcome you all here today attending attending today's celebrations. I'd also like to give thanks to Gaibra, God, for allowing us to continue to share culture and spirituality. Thank you. Thank you, Lily. I too acknowledge the traditional custodians of the lands, seas and waterways that make up the Catholic Diocese of Cairns. In the 200th year of Catholic education in Australia, we are privileged to celebrate the National Mass on the feast day of Our Lady Help of Christians with the longest serving bishop in Australia currently, Bishop James Foley. In addition, we welcome and thank Father Neil Muir, Episcopal Vicar and Moderator of the Curia, Father Frank Gordon, Vicar General, Father Darius and Father Pat McKenna. We thank them and all our clergy. Leadership and companionship not only today, but throughout our history as a Cairns Catholic education community. Many religious orders have helped shape the educational communities that formed in our diocese. The Good Samaritan Sisters in Tully and Innisfail, the Augustinians in Mariba, the Josephite Sisters in Dimbula, the Daughters of Our Lady of the Sacred Heart and Patrician Brothers in Waibeni and Kiriri, and the Mercy Sisters who first landed in Cooktown and then established or served in many of our schools from the Tablelands to the Torres Strait. We are grateful for the many women and men who shared their vocation with the educational communities in which they served. We are also glad that another significant order, the Morris Brothers, who like the Mercy Sisters, were prolific in their support of Catholic education and are able to have a representative with us today. And we welcome Brother Darren Burge, the Vice Principal of the Australian Province of the Morris Brothers and former Principal of St Augustine's College at Parramatta Park. We also warmly welcome Kay Rees, the Director of Cairns Catholic Early Learning and Care, and uh, Kevin Garland and Nick Hardy, who represent the Board of Governance uh, for Catholic Education in the Diocese of Cairns and also our other colleagues from the Dyson offices. Your presence is a visible witness of the great partnerships and support we have within the broader Cairns Catholic community. Finally, we welcome the students, staff and parents who are at the heart of Catholic education. We gather at St Monica's Cathedral, the heart of the Diocese of Cairns, cognizant of those who have walked before us hope-filled for those who will follow. 
Today we celebrate the feast of Our Lady Help of Christians, the patroness of Australia. On Wednesday, we commemorate National Sorry Day. In commemorating the stoicism and strength of the First Nations peoples and recalling the pain of other individuals and communities who have been hurt by previous practices and policies of Catholic educators and leaders, we commit to learning from our past so that we can heal together to be part of a stronger future. Gathered once again from the north, the south and the west, we stand in our mother church, illuminated by the magnificent windows that tell of the presence of the creator spirit long before Catholic schools arrived in these lands. Today, let us join with the other 1,755 schools around Australia who, like us, are committing to being people who are faith-filled and hopeful. Please stand now and join us in our entrance hymn, We Walk With Mary. And we gather in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. It's appropriate we gather today, feast to the patron of Australia, Our Lady Help of Christians, but a day after Pentecost, the coming of the Spirit, and one of the early names for our, our own country, Australia, was the Great 
south land of the Holy Spirit. And uh, God's Spirit brings us wisdom and knowledge. So it's most appropriate for us to be here this day. So brothers and sisters, to prepare ourselves to come together and celebrate these mysteries, let's reflect upon our own failings and our own needs. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray to the Lord uh, for our God. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us praise God. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who placed the love of Our Lady, help of Christians, in the hearts of those who brought the Catholic faith to these shores, grant through Mary's intercession, wisdom to our leaders, and integrity to our citizens, so that under Mary's protection, Australia may know harmony, justice, and peace. We make this prayer through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Be seated, please.
a reading from the letter of St. James. The harvest of justice is sown in peace by those who make peace. If there are any wise or learned men among you, let them show it by their good lives, with humility and wisdom in their actions. But if you, at heart, you have the bitterness of jealousy or a self-seeking ambition, never make any claims for yourself or cover up the truth with lies. Principles of this kind are not the wisdom that comes down from above. They are only earthly, animal and devilish. Wherever you find jealousy and ambition, you find disharmony and wicked things of every kind being done. Whereas the wisdom that comes down from above is essentially something pure. It also makes for peace and is kindly and considerate. It is full of compassion and shows itself by doing good. Nor is there any trace of partiality or hypocrisy in it. Peacemakers, when they work for peace, sow the seeds which will bear fruit in holiness. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response is, you are the highest honour of our race. You are the highest honour of our race. May you be blessed, my daughter, by God most high, beyond all women on earth. And may the Lord God be blessed, the creator of heaven and earth. trust you have shown us shall not pass from the memories of men, but shall ever be reminded them of the power of God. God grant you be always held in honor and rewarded with blessings, since you did not consider your own life when our nation was brought to its knees. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. Mary set out and went as quickly as she could to a town in the hill country of Judah. She went into Zechariah's house and greeted Elizabeth. Now as soon as Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leapt in her womb. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. She gave a loud cry and said, Of all women, you are the most blessed, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. Why should I be honoured with a visit from the mother of my Lord? For the moment your greeting reached my ears, the child in my womb leapt for joy. Yes, Blessed is she who believed that the promise made her by the Lord would be fulfilled. And Mary said, My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord, and my spirit exalts in God my Saviour, because he has looked upon his lowly handmaid. Yes, from this day forward, all generations will call me blessed, for the Almighty has done great things for me. Holy is his name, and his mercy reaches from age to age for those who fear him. He has shown the power of his arm, he has routed the proud of heart. 
He has pulled down princes from their thrones and exalted the lowly. The hungry he has filled with good things, the rich sent empty away. He has come to the help of Israel, his servant, mindful of his mercy, according to the promise he made to our ancestors of his mercy to Abraham and to his descendants forever. Mary stayed with Elizabeth about three months and then went back home. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is God's name. Each one of us could say that. The Almighty has done great things for each one of us. The greatest miracle in each one of our lives, as I think back, happened to us, each one of us, between the ages of four and five, when we first went to school. And within that first year of preschool or school, we learnt to read and to write and to count. And that's extraordinary. How did it happen? I always take my hat off uh, to those who teach uh, preschool and grade one, achieving that extraordinary miracle. We gather here to celebrate 200 years of Catholic schooling, and if you go back 200 years, uh, most people, our own great-grandparents, could neither read, nor write, nor count. The uh, uh, marriage registers over in the archives there from the 1870s in Cook County and elsewhere, where the bride and the groom, perhaps your great-great-grandparents, where you had to sign your name, very often it's only an X. Our great-grandparents Most of them could not read or write or count. Now, uh, counting's an interesting thing in itself. We take it for granted. Um, But it's got a lot of mysteries to it. 60 seconds, one minute. 60 minutes, one hour. Um, uh, 24 hours, one day. Where did we get that from? The Mesopotamians, 4,000 years ago, decided, discovered, uh, that you could break time up into multiples of 12. 60 seconds, one, two, three, four, makes a minute. 60 minutes, one hour, 24 hours, one day, 365 days in the year, or 366 in a leap year. Extraordinary. But it doesn't quite work, because uh, the planets don't move in a perfect circle, they move in an ellipse, and the calendar created by Pope Gregory in the Uh, 16th century um, to correct the problem introduced the leap year to get the calendar back in step and Gregory's calendar won't have to be readjusted for something like the next 4 
thousand years. Okay, another curious thing about mathematics. The Romans started to count with one I. The Arabs introduced zero. And therein lies a problem. And it's very evident, I hope I'm not being boring about all of this, um, we took, we're in the 21st century, and yet we still talk about this being 2021. And to overcome the problem, people talk about the 2000s. That's wrong. The 2000s, quite strictly, are from 2001 to 2011. And there's the problem. Uh, when does one occur? Does it occur from zero to one or from one to two? Or put it another way, if you're counting the fence posts, do you count the posts or the space between? Life's full of extraordinary mysteries which we largely take for granted. And our education um, gives us um, a sense of wonder. The Almighty has done great things for me. Holy is his name. Those of us of a certain age who went through the Queensland education system, uh, it was actually a very good system. In grade six, you and your family uh, went on a train trip on the Sunlander from Brisbane to Cairns. And you learnt the name of every major railway station from Brisbane to Cairns and Cairns to Brisbane. Now, let me try and do that backwards. Uh, you leave out smaller places, unfortunately, Gordon Vale and Babinda. So you went Cairns, Innisfale, Tully, Ingham, Townsville, Eyre, then Home Hill straight across the Burdekin, Bowen, Proserpine, Mackay, St Lawrence, Rockhampton, Gladstone, Bundaberg, Meribra, Gympie, Nambour, Caboolture, Brisbane. Now I wonder who else can do that. I had a nephew who's an engineer in the railways and I was able to do that. And he said, why do you need to know that? You can just computerise it. I said, what happens when the computer's down? It's also, I'm waiting for the day that GPS is down and most people won't be able to find their way home. So, education is a great thing. And the 200 years of education we've had here in Australia uh, marks a remarkable development. Interestingly, in the... Uh, Marist magazine, La Vella, the most recent copy, uh, tucked away in an insert in the middle is a very interesting article by a man called Charles McGee. And it traces the first 80 years of Catholic education. And from 1820 through perhaps to 1880, Almost all the teachers in Catholic schools were lay people, married men and women. And they were paid very poorly and they had very few teaching aids. They taught in bush huts, had very few books, uh, very few uh, maps and charts on the wall and even very few exercise books. In my first year at school, in 1953, in grade one and two, you didn't get an exercise book, you had a slate. And you wrote on it uh, with a stylus that made a terrible screechy sound. And then you'd 
wipe it out, and then you'd start again. Because even then, books, paper, was quite scarce. Now, what happened in the history of Catholic education uh, from the 1870s, uh, because government monies for schools, church schools, ceased, then uh, Catholic bishops here in Australia engaged teaching religious brothers and sisters, and for the next 80 years, they carried the burden of teaching in Catholic schools. And I went to Morris Brothers Ashgrove in 1960, there were only two lay teachers in the whole school. The rest were Maris brothers. By the time I finished six years later, that had almost turned completely around. And now, our own experience is, almost all of our teachers now are back to lay people who do an extraordinary task. It's interesting, this article, teachers in those first 80 years were so poorly paid that they couldn't even afford to rent a house. And they and their wife or husband and children would sleep and live in the back of the classroom. That's how tough it was. So, we stand uh, on giant's shoulders and we've moved to a new phase in Catholic education and yet the Lord continues to do great things for each one of us. That sense of wisdom and knowledge, and that in itself, uh, that is the gift of God. God is truth. So, we've got a lot to be thankful for as we gather here, and I'm sorry if I've upset your uh, mathematical mentality by introducing the notion of zero. But it's one hell of a problem if you stop and think about it. Um, you just don't want to think too hard about it. Like, did you turn one on the very moment you were born, or did you turn one 12 months later? And what happens between zero and one? And perhaps if that's too big a problem, it might be a whole lot easier if we were all racehorses and automatically uh, we all had our birthday on the same day, one day in August. Well, there you go, there's a further thought for you. So, let's now stand and pray. As we celebrate these 200 years of Catholic education in Australia, let us continue to open our minds and our hearts in prayer to our ever-present and gracious God. We pray for the church and all priests and religious. May they inspire all of the faithful to accept Pope Francis' invitation to dialogue with each other and respect all of humanity. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for Catholic education in Australia, that it may continue to be a source of hope and inspiration that provides faith for a future of joy, understanding, and healing. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our diocese and its people that we may listen to all the voices and continue to commit to the faith formation of all who seek Catholic education in the Diocese of Cairns. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all religious orders that have built the foundations of Catholic education in our diocese, the Good Samaritan Sisters, the Mercy Sisters, the Maris Brothers, the Josephite Sisters, the Augustinian Order, and the daughters of Our Lady of the Sacred Heart. May their mission and vision be remembered by those who walk in their footsteps. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our families that seek Catholic education for their children. May they be blessed with wisdom 
as they guide their children throughout their educational and life journeys. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the sick and suffering. May they be blessed with courage and grace as they face adversity and hardship. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all those who have died, especially parents, students and staff of Catholic education in our diocese. May they find peace in your heavenly kingdom. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty God, listen to these prayers and in your kindness grant what we humbly have asked through Christ our Lord. Pray now, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. Look, O Lord, upon the prayers and offerings of your faithful presented in commemoration of the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, that they may be pleasing to you and may confer on us your help and your forgiveness. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For just as through your beloved Son you created the human race, so also through Christ, with great goodness, you formed it anew. And so it is right that all your creatures serve you, all the redeemed praise you, and all your saints with one heart bless you. Therefore, we too extol you with all the angels, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down upon them like the dewfall, the Holy Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples. 
disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and me, your unworthy servant, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, especially all those who have taught and learnt in our Catholic schools over all these years who have gone before us, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed Apostles, uh, Marcelin Campania, with Mary McKillop, uh, Catherine McCauley, uh, St. Augustine, uh, St. Patrick, uh, and I hope I have, and well, it's actually Archbishop B. Holding, who founded the uh, Sisters of the Good Samaritan, and uh, I don't know who founded uh, the uh, sisters, uh, the Franciscan missionaries, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, may we merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever.
Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days. In your mercy, keep us always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's offer each other a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Refreshed by this heavenly sacrament, Lord God, we pray. We pray for Australia, our earthly home, that with the help of the Virgin Mary, we may become a new creation in Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Be seated again, please. In order to help us remember our membership of the 1,755 Catholic schools across Australia. This is a connection that we have with the 700,077 students and their families who attend these schools. And with deep gratitude for the 100,000 plus staff who work and minister in these schools. We now invite Bishop James to bless the commemorative 200 years of Catholic education pins and prayer cards, which will be distributed to students and staff post this Mass today. May these commemorative 200 years of Catholic education pins and prayer cards and those who receive them be blessed throughout their journey with Catholic education as either students, staff or family members. May their ties to Catholic education be centred in Christ. We ask this blessing in your name, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. I now invite principals or the representatives of our Catholic schools of the Diocese of Cairns to come forward to accept these commemorative 200 years of Catholic education pins and prayer cards for their staff and students on behalf of their school communities. St Augustine's College, Parramatta Park, Our Lady of the Sacred Heart, Waibeni and Kiruri. St Andrews College, Redlinch. Mount St Burdens College, Herberton. St Gerard Magella, Waree. St. Rita's Babinda, St. Thomas's of Villanova, Mariba, Holy Cross, Trinity Park, Mother of Good Counsel, North Cairns, St. Teresa's Bentley Park, Holy Spirit College, Cooktown, Mananda and Edmonton, St. Anthony's Dimbula, St. Mary's College, Waree, St. Joseph's Parramatta Park, St. Rita's South Johnston, Good Council College Innisfail, St. Stephen's College Mariba, St. Clare's Tully, St. Joseph's Weeper,
Killip Catholic College, Mount Peter. St. Francis Xavier Mananda. Good Council Primary, Innisfail. St. Joseph's, Atherton. St. Michael's, Gordon Vale. St. John's, Silkwood. Newman Catholic College, Smithfield. St. Augustine's, Mossman. And St. Monica's College, Cairns. We also hold in our prayers those schools and representatives who were not able to be in attendance today due to, due to their own feast day celebrations and distance, St. Teresa's Ravenshoe and Our Lady Help of Christians, Earlville. As representatives of our schools and Catholic community, I invite the principals here gathered to join with me as we pray the national prayer for 200 years, faith in the future of Catholic education. Almighty and loving God, God with gratitude for the endeavours of Catholic education in the past, with confidence in our Catholic preschools, schools and universities today, and with faith in their continuing contribution in the future, we celebrate 200 years of Catholic education in this great South land. As our Heavenly Father, we thank you for your providential care for your children in this land in inspiring priests, religious and lay people to found and staff our schools in ages past. As Christ the teacher, you grace the staff and leaders of Catholic education today. As they build on the achievements of their predecessors, direct them in their presence efforts to ensure that every young Australian has the opportunity for an excellent education and formation in faith. As our inspiring spirit, you lead us into the future. In the century ahead, grant those teaching and learning in our schools those planning and leading, and the families and community that entrust their young people to us, a love of learning and a willingness to be the face of Christ in the world of tomorrow. Pour out your abundant blessings upon all involved in the Ministry of Catholic Education. Amen. Our Lady of the Southern Cross, St Mary of the Cross MacKillop, Patron of Catholic Education in Australia, As our principals and representatives return to their seats, I invite you to stand for one final blessing. Oh dear, this is like confirmation all over again. <laughs> Kevin, you can't be seen, you're hiding behind me. <laughs> Never end up clapping our school principal. <laughs> All done? All done. The Lord be with you. Amen. Bow your heads now and pray for God's blessing. May God, who through the childbearing of the Blessed Virgin Mary, willed in his great kindness to redeem the human race, 
be pleased to enrich you be, be pleased to enrich you with his blessings amen may you who have devoutly gathered on this day carry away with you the gifts of spiritual joy and heavenly rewards and may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Now, one of the troubles is, once you start going down memory lane, you never stop. 14th of February, 1966. My last year at Maris Brothers College, Ash. And on the 14th of February, 1966, we moved from pounds, shillings and pence to dollars and cents. It's what would be called a paradigm shift or even a Copernican revolution. And why it stays in mind is for two reasons. There's a very canny Scottish Marist brother, Brother Jarleth at the tuck shop at Ashgrove, uh, who very cleverly decided that he was going to uh, operate an exchange system with new currency. So for six pence, you'd get a brand new five cent piece. But for six pennies, you'd also get a brand new... Uh, uh, no, for six uh, uh, one cent coins, you'd get a new five cent piece. The problem was uh, five cents equaled the old sixpence and ten cents the old shilling, but there was no exact equivalent for a penny. So Brother Jarleth made a nice little profit that day and uh, a friend of my parents, and I suddenly remembered his name, I hope he's not related to anybody, a man called Tony Grano who lived at St Lucia, which was a rather posh suburb in Brisbane, and he had a lifelong ambition to be a millionaire. And you know what? At midnight, between the 13th of February and the 14th of February, 1966, miraculously he became a millionaire. He had 500,000 pounds in his bank account, and overnight that turned into a million dollars. And he was as proud as punch. Now. Just the other thing, I see there's food out there. Monday reminds me, back in my school days, it was tuck shop day. You only got one tuck shop day back then. And for little lunch, you'd get a cream bun, a bun with some horrible sweet mock cream in it. And you'd also get uh, a small half pint bottle of milk. And that was a giveaway because there was uh, bulk uh, in the Queensland dairy industry, and every primary school child would get this little bottle of milk each day. The only trouble was it would sit in the sun from about 8 o'clock in the morning uh, through to little lunch, and even in subtropical Queensland, it had curdled by then. So there's a whole generation of us who hate milk. Now, I see outside there's uh, water and soft drink, so you won't have to worry about that. And on the other days of the week, you had to bring your own school lunch and it would sit in your school bag out on the hot veranda until big lunch. And by the time big lunch came around, your Vegemite or your banana sandwiches would have gone quite off. So like the milk, I can't stand bananas or Vegemite. So... That's some of those uh, riches one brings from one's rich Catholic education. And thank God it's different now to what it was then. So with that thought in mind, let's go in peace to love and serve the Lord.
to Christ who has taught us to love now, renewed by the Spirit who go, we're learning together. We will live, love, reach out to the world, bringing joy, hope, and peace in God's name as your people. Have faith, faith in the future. From humble beginnings we've grown, with faith in our mission. In a world so in need of real hope, we reach for tomorrow, bringing the gospel of truth. We carry the flame of the Spirit, Jesus our way and our life, guiding us through. We will live, love, reach out to the world, bringing joy, hope, and peace in God's name as your people. We have faith, faith in the future. As our choir from Holy Cross takes their seat again, can we all join together again to thank Chris and Maddie and certainly every student from Holy Cross for their singing today. And before uh, Bill comes to speak with us again, I would like to again thank um, Bishop James and Father Frank, Neil, Pat and Darius for being with us today. And may I just share, tomorrow there will be further celebrations as the national hymn which we have just sung so beautifully will be released nationally and four of our schools feature in that video. Those four schools we do wish to publicly acknowledge, so keep an eye out for these schools when you see this. Uh, um, Our Lady of the Sacred Heart, on Waibeni, or Thursday Island, St Stephen's College, Mariba, Holy Cross Primary School, Trinity Park, and St Mary's College, Waree. So spot them tomorrow because it's a viral video, it's massive and it's gonna go across Australia. So we're very proud of those four schools. Over to you, Mr Dixon. Thank you, Sharon. And I just wanted to uh, pass on our thanks to all of the people involved in organising this morning, Sharon and her team um, here at Catholic Education, but also all of our administration staff who have put in a lot of effort and work to help with the organisation of today. It's been a great celebration as we um, joined with uh, our diocese and uh, Catholic education communities right across Australia to celebrate this great 200-year celebration Once again, thank you to everyone for attending here today. It's a great effort to bring uh, students and staff from each one of our schools, um, and we thank you very much for that. And we also, once again, thank all of those involved in the organisation of today, and we invite people for something, some refreshments, as Bishop James pointed out, on the veranda. I don't think there's any warm milk, but there's plenty of cold drinks. Thank you very much.